Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today I wanted to talk about juggling motherhood and business and traveling. So as you can see on some of my videos that I share on this channel, um, I'm always traveling, taking family out, or sometimes I don't even go with my family. And so uh, people always ask like, how do you do it all? How do you not feel guilty of leaving your family or your, your husband and kids home while you're doing a lot of traveling? So let's get straight into it. From early on, I always felt, felt that I was a different person. I am not just a mum. I'm not just a wife. I am, you call say Lynn, right? And this Lynn really just needs to fill her own cup up, you know? And so even when I was really young, I had a kid at 20 years old. I still really prioritized myself having fun going out with friends because I always knew that if I were, if I'm not happy, then I'm never going to be able to have that motivation to actually, um, you know, take care of my son or really motivate myself to work hard and be there for my, my son or be successful. And so I've taken on that kind of belief as I've became, uh, you know, I got married, have more kids. And so straight away, even when we had kids, I made sure that me and my husband have our own time together. And it's not just because we feel bad that our kids are young or etc. And, you know, I would take opportunities to go to places like Coachella, where a friend of mine was having a hens party and she was like, hey, we're going to go to Coachella. And I really thought about it and said, would this make me happy? Is this an exciting opportunity? And I said to myself, yes, I do. I knew that I, it's very rare for me to actually have any friends left at uh, that age that would want to go to places like that. And so it was in America. And I, I think my, my last son was maybe less than a year old and it was just so fun and I'm so glad that I did it. And when people look at the photo, they're like, wow, you're still this young girl going out, you know, going to festivals and, you know, you have small kids, but it never bothered me because I don't care what people actually think about how I live my life. I care about my happiness. I care that my children have an opportunity to actually grow some independence because sometimes as parents or as as a mum, you think that by being there, spoon feeding them, making sure you're always there watching them, telling them what to do, that's called love and that's called taking care of them. But I think that what we're forgetting is that by doing that, they don't get to grow up. So I'll give you an example. I just came back from a retreat four nights. Um, one thing I was worried is, oh my God, my husband doesn't know how to uh, make food for the kids. And But then at the end of the day, I felt like, no, I want this opportunity for him to also just step up as a father. I was surprised when my daughter called me up and said, mom, I just wanted to make some picking duck and it's in the fridge. And I know you've, you know, you, cause we bought, we bought it from Costco. So it's actually a kit where you can actually make it yourself. And so she was like, dad's not home yet. And I feel like eating now. Can I please make it? And she's nine years old. And I would remember saying, no, it might be messy and, and it's hard. And I'm not sure if, you know, if you could do it. So just wait for dad. But I stopped myself and said, hang on. I need to give her an opportunity to grow up. And so I said, okay, go and do this and gave her instructions. And we did FaceTime and she started making dinner. And my husband was so happy when he came home to a nine-year-old who's made him dinner. So he, she made him picking duck. She grew up, he grew up. And basically I had a really amazing time at the retreat coming home to even more matured, a more matured family. And one of the things that I've always wanted my husband to do is actually spend more time with the kids because uh, he's basically kind of a little bit old school where he's used to going out making the money and the wife does everything. And one thing that was missing in my relationship is him being close to his kids or wanting to spend quality time. But because I traveled, I went away, I got photos of them doing like, you know, bike riding together. He taught him how to ride a motorbike and I was just so happy. And I think that by being away allowed me to also create some um, love and that missing feeling for my family and they also miss me. But most importantly, I think it's just helped them to really grow up. And when it comes to parenting, I don't think anyone has the Bible or the manual to do it. Uh, and everyone's just guessing their way through things. And so the way I navigate into parenting is really just to do what makes me feel right. And then not having to sacrifice my soul, my happiness for the kid. And so I kind of trusted my instinct with my first son. With my first son, I really made sure that I'm happy when I'm around him. He sees me happy and that, you know, I'm not a helicopter mom and I allow him to a lot of freedom. And he ended up growing up to be a very independent son. I also didn't 
breastfeed him even though it was forced upon you or people make you feel really guilty that you don't breastfeed and I just felt that it was just so difficult um you know it, I was miserable trying to do it and as much as it's healthy for you I just felt like it just wasn't suitable for my lifestyle and I wasn't happy and so I didn't do that and at the end of the day he still grew up very healthy he, he never gets sick and so I try not to always I don't want to, I mean, it's not like I don't want to listen to people, but when I listen, I try to apply it to my life and if it doesn't feel right. I don't do it such as putting them on a routine, you know, strict routines may created a lot of anxiety. I see that sometimes kids can get even more crazier when they're out of routine. Whereas sometimes the people, the kids that are used to kind of adapting to the environment can handle that changes as well. And so how I've done it initially is just following my heart. And now I have a lot of confidence in how I raise my two other kids in that I'm still quite carefree and allow them that, that time to be independent and not be helicopter up. And so I'm really amazed to also see some of my friends earlier on when um, they were also telling me the way they do things and how it's so different to me. And I said, just relax. But of course they can't because it's, it's their first kid. And so the only thing you can do is just allow them to be them, not pushing your agenda or your belief on them and just let them have their own journey. And it's really interesting to see when they have their second or third kid, they kind of became me. <laughs> they became like, oh, I don't care anymore. I'm carefree now. And, and there was no point in being so strict and so hard on yourself uh, by always being there because they've realized that they were sacrificing their happiness for their kids. And at first they felt guilty. They're like, no, I need to be always there for my kid. And when they did that, first time round, it ended up, you know, hurting them. I wouldn't say killing them, but the second, third time they end up losing up a lot more. So this is where you just need to stick to your gut instinct, do what, what you want, but also as a message or tip to everyone, every parent is to not kind of push your belief or gender on other people. So when it comes to traveling, I always make sure that the kids know what they're supposed to do. I mean, when they're younger, I used to be able to leave them with my parents in Melbourne uh, because my parents didn't get to see them much. They didn't mind when I could actually leave them for two weeks because they're like, oh, we don't see them the whole year or six months. So we're happy to mind them that long. And so being taken care of by the grandparents is no problem, of course. But now that they've grown up, I already know their capacity capability. I know that they can actually take themselves to school, prepare them to school already. And so I know that, um, you know, you don't just kind of drop your kids in the ocean and just you know, hopefully that they survive. Uh, you kind of already prepped them up or taught them some skill set or some lessons so that you know that they can take uh, care of themselves when you're gone. So when it comes to calling, um, I usually maybe call in the morning and then once at night, but in between, I also just trusted them to be able to do what they need to do and allowing my husband to step up as a father and trust that he can do what he does. But I'm also very lucky that I found a husband who trusts me and allows me to be myself because if you're in a wrong relationship where the other person maybe doesn't like traveling, maybe have some trust issues and stop you from living your life and go, no, you know, when you're doing this, you're neglecting us. It's not fair and making, putting a lot of that guilt on you. I think that could be very, very difficult. And I remember being in those relationships and I got out of that. And so I asked the universe in one of my shopping lists was that my husband was going to be someone that was trusting, that didn't have insecurity, that just never get jealous. And I think that helps me whether I'm traveling or when I'm going out with friends or whatever I'm doing, whether I'm networking a lot in business, he just trusts me and he knows that I, um, you know, will always do the right thing and come home. So just to wrap up here, I really encourage you as a woman to really prioritize your happiness, do what makes you feel good and don't allow your kids or your parents or your husband to make you feel guilty because at the end of the day, it's your life and I encourage you to live it the way you want. So thank you so much for watching and love to hear uh, what you think about my thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye.